السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا وقائدنا سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم يا أرحم الراحمين افتح علينا فتوح العارفين علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا يا الله We mentioned earlier that in this series we will talk about the 10 outer actions that would draw us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and would get us more prepared for the day when we will leave this dunya to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The outer action that we're going to talk about today is performing hajj. Hajj is one of the five pillars of Islam. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Buniyal Islam ala khams. Shahadati an la ilaha illa Allah wa anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh wa iqami salati wa itaai zakati wa hajji albayti wa sawmi ramadhan. The Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said Allah, and fasting the month of Ramadan. So we'll concentrate and we'll focus today on performing Hajj. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Ali Imran, in Ayah 97, said, وَلِلَّهِ عَلَى النَّاسِ حِجُّ الْبَيْتِ مَنِ اسْتَطَاعَ إِلَيْهِ سَبِيلًا and due to Allah from the people is pilgrimage to the house. For whoever is able to find there to a way. We all know that undertaking the Hajj at least once is a duty for Muslims who are physically and financially able to make the journey to Mecca. So what does the emphasis of financial ability mean? Whoever is able to do it. So what does it, what does it mean? We said that it means physical and financial ability. This is the ability that a Muslim should have in order for Hajj to be a fard for him. So what is this? What is What does the emphasis on financial ability mean? Um, financial ability means uh, to ensure that a Muslim, uh, the, the Muslim takes care of his family first. So he should keep them, he should keep his family whom he is leaving behind. They, he should keep them well sustained so, so, so that they don't need anyone to provide for them financially when he is away. It also means that he owns uh, the needed money for for him to travel uh, to cover his expenses while traveling and to cover the expenses of the journey while he is there and also to cover the expenses of the way coming back home. So all that falls under the financial ability. Uh, now there is also another requirement that a Muslim should be healthy and uh, should be physically capable of undertaking the Hajj, undertaking the pilgrimage and during, enduring, he should be able to endure the severities of the travel. You know, sometimes there are problems, sometimes there, there are hardships. So he should be able to endure 
the severities of the travel. Uh, if he cannot fulfill all these requirements, then he is not obliged to perform Hajj. Now, when Muslims begin the journey to Mecca, what do they do? The first thing they do, they leave all worldly things behind them. And they start to repeat لَبَّيْكَ اللَّهُمَّ لَبَّيْكَ لَبَّيْكَ لَا شَرِيكَ لَكَ لَبَّيْكَ إِنَّ الْحَمْدَ وَالنِّعْمَةَ لَكَ وَالْمُلْكَ لَا شَرِيكَ لَكَ Which means, here I am at your service, O oh my Lord. Ya Allah, here I am, here I am. Uh, no partner uh, to, uh, to, uh, do you have? And here I am. Uh, truly, the praise and the favor are yours, Ya Allah, and the dominion. No partner do you have. So these words, these are the words enchanted by some two, two, three million people performing Hajj. And it soothes the heart to say these words. Subhanallah. So when these when these words uh, uh, Muslims say they, they 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 say, you feel that these words prepare the hearts of Muslims to receive the lights during this journey. Now, all these people, two three million, sometimes more are all performing the Hajj steps simultaneously. Imagine simultaneously, all together at the same time. All of them pray together. Imagine two, three million people are lined up. They all start their prayer at the same time when the Imam says, Allahu Akbar. They all make rukuwa at the same time when the imam says Allahu Akbar. They all follow the imam very closely with each movement in the, of the prayer. And they finish their prayer at the same time. They all, they, they all do all the steps of the prayer. Every, they pray at the same time. What an amazing religion Islam is. Imagine that there is a commander in the army and he wants to line up the soldiers, two, three million soldiers. He needs at least 10 minutes to get them all, uh, all lined up and uh, uh, starting to, to follow the orders. But it takes the imam just to say Allahu Akbar so that all the millions, all those millions start to follow. SubhanAllah. Now, if we want to talk about the etiquettes of the Hajj, what are the etiquettes? The first thing, when someone intends to perform Hajj, the first thing to do is a tawbatun nasuh, repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the first thing that a person does. Ya Allah, accept my, my tawbah, accept my repentance. And he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help him uh, along the, the, the way of uh, this journey. So this is the first thing. Then he starts with actions. So what does he do? If he has any uh, amana for anybody, then he returns the uh, uh, people uh, interests that he has for them. So he returns the rights to people. Then he asks people to forgive him. He calls his friends, his family. He says, I'm going to Hajj. Forgive me if I made any mistake. Uh, uh, 
for you, uh, uh, towards you. And he chooses a righteous companion who is going to hedge. He chooses a sheikh to be with. He chooses a friend of Allah to be with. And the companion while traveling is very important. So this is one of the etiquettes of performing hajj. And then the money that he has should be pure, should be halal, completely halal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is tayyib, la yaqbalu illa tayyiba. Allah is uh, uh, right, Allah is good. He doesn't accept anything that is not good. And one more thing which is very important to keep in mind is that his intention should be just for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, only for the sake of Allah. He's going to perform hajj just for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not so that people would say, oh, he's a hajji. Not that he uh, combines his intention with doing some trading uh, along the way. No, hajj is for the sake of Allah with no other intention. And before he leaves to Hajj, he should attend a gathering of knowledge just to learn about Hajj, about the rules of Hajj, what is halal, what is haram, what is sunnah, what uh, breaks the Hajj, what... So he should learn about Hajj. While in Hajj, during Hajj, he should be away uh, away from dispute. No arguments, no dispute. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah, Al-Hajju ashhurum ma'lumat, faman farada fihin al-hajja fala rafatha wala fusuqa wala jidala fi al-hajja. So, hajj is uh, during well-known month, so there is special uh, time for Hajj. So whoever has made Hajj obligatory upon uh, himself and that is by entering the state of Ihram, there is to be for him no sexual relations, husband, wife, no disobedience and no disputing, no arguments during Hajj. And of course, when someone is going to Hajj, he should uh, he should have good manners, and he should be uh, okay, he should keep in mind that there should be there might be some uh, uh, hardship, and there might be some ease. So it's, it's like uh, a dish. Sometimes you will have more salt in it. Sometimes you will have more pepper in it. But at the end, it should be a good dish. So don't worry about what's, what's there. Just think of that, the purpose that you are going for hash. And forget about everything all the obstacles that you might you might face during this time. Now, there are secrets for the Hajj. So what are these, these secrets? See that Ibrahim, alayhi salam, when he first built the Kaaba, he called people to perform Hajj. And people came and they performed Hajj. Later on, uh, there were some, uh, so something with performing Hajj. 
For example, uh, people started to worship idols. So they put many idols in the Kaaba, around the Kaaba, everywhere. And they used to go there to uh, uh, pray to these idols. So there was a, a shift of intentions. When Sayyidina Ibrahim uh, built the Kaaba, the intention was just for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then things came into, into that. When Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, 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 conquered Mecca, the first thing he did, he destroyed these idols. So uh, there are no more idols in uh, uh, around the Kaaba or in, in the Kaaba. So what, what else did he do? He prevented people from going around the Kaaba uh, naked. So there were some, uh, some, some bad mentalities, thinking how they should perform the, the hajj. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam set the rules. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Asked Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to call people for hajj. So now the Kaaba is uh, clear, is pure, no more, no more uh, uh, idols in the Kaaba. People cannot uh, perform hajj uh, naked. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he said in Surah Al-Hajj, Ayat 27, وَأَذِّمْ فِي النَّاسِ بِالْحَجِّ يَأْتُوكَ رِجَالًا وَعَلَى كُلِّ ضَامِرٍ يَأْتِينَ مِنْ كُلِّ فَجِّنْ عَمِيقٍ And proclaim to the people the hajj, pilgrimage. So they will come to you on foot, uh, on foot and on every lean camel. عَلَى كُلِّ ضَامِرٍ so where would they come from? They will come from every distance pass. Every distance pass. All over. Right and left, north and south. They will come to perform Hajj. So there are secrets. Now the Kaaba is purified from idols and it's just to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has honored this, his house. And he combined it to his name. And we say, Baytullah. Baytullah. So the house of Allah that's being visited by uh, all, all uh, people who are performing Hajj, who are performing Umrah, they're coming from everywhere. And when we see the Kaaba, one of the du'as that we do, Allahumma zid hadha al-bayta ta'zeeman wa tashreefa. Oh Allah, increase the, uh, this, the, the, this house to be more honor and to be uh, more valuable. So people now are coming to perform Hajj, are coming to, to uh, perform the uh, uh, Umrah, they come very humbly. And there, all people are equal. The rich or poor, the old and young. So millions of people from across the world from all walks of life and every corner of the world, they all unite to perform the Hajj. So this is reminding us that in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are all equal as human beings. No one is better than another. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that in Surah Al-Hujuhati when he said, Ya ayyuhal nasu inna khalaqnakum min zakarin wa untha wa ja'alnakum shurubam wa qabaila li ta'arafu. 
إن أكرمكم عند الله أتقاكم إن الله عليم خبير So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is calling, calling people all mankind Indeed we have created you from male and female from Sayyidina Adam and Sayyidina and Sayyidina Hawa Hawa and made you peoples and tribes that you may know one another. So indeed, the most noble of you in the sight of Allah is the most righteous. And Allah is knowing. Allah is acquainted. Allah knows everything. So in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are all equal. It doesn't matter the color. It doesn't matter the age. It doesn't matter how rich we are. It doesn't matter. Nothing matters in the eye of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except who has righteousness in the heart. This is what's important to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, Hajj by itself creates a sense of equality among the pilgrims. So the rich are identical to the poor, the white to the black, the king to the servant, the, the young to the old. We're all wearing the same thing. Wearing white towels. This is for the men. All men. Now, if we want to talk about the steps of Hajj. So what are the steps of Hajj? The first one is Ihram. And Ihram has three types. Ifrad, Tamattu' and Qiram. So what is Ifrad? Ifrad is to have the intention of Hajj but just to perform Hajj, okay? Now, what is Tamitta? Tamitta is that a person intends to have first Umrah, then he breaks his Ihram, and then perform Hajj, do another Ihram and perform Hajj. With this, with this, the person who is doing a tamattur should slaughter. Okay. Now, the third, the third type of ihram is to do it, to have the intention that you are doing a qiran. Qiran means that you are doing hajj and umrah together. And in this case also, there should be slaughtering. So, what is after we do the niyyah? What happens? So, with the niyyah of ihram, some permissible actions become haram. You cannot do them anymore. The one performing hajj cannot do, cannot, uh, there's no perfume, no husband wife uh, sexual relation, no stitched cloths for men, no hunting. So there are so many uh, rules, what to do, what not to do. And uh, by itself, in fact, ihram is to be away from desires and what the nafs likes to do. So keeping the nafs only in a state of remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, after Ihram, we have the Tawaf. And the Tawaf is going around the Kaaba seven times, starting with the black stone and saying, Bismillah, Allahu Akbar. So when you are uh, at the black stone, you, you raise your left hand facing the, um, the raising your uh, left hand and you point at the Hajar, at the black stone, and you say, Bismillah, Allahu Akbar, and this indicates the starting of the Tawaf. So each going one time around the Kaaba, each Tawaf, you, each one time 
this tawaf is going around the Kaaba seven times. So each one, when you when you reach the um, uh, Hajar al-Aswad, the black stone, then you say, you stop, you point to the Hajar al-Aswad and you say, Bismillah, Allahu Akbar. So, tawaf by itself replaces the two rak'ahs, the sunnah, uh, when uh, of greeting the mosque so when you come to the kaaba when you go to the kaaba you don't do two rakas to uh, the greeting of the mosque you do a tawaf if you can when someone goes around the kaaba and starts with the black stone he always keeps in mind that these are just stones the Kaaba, the Hather, the black stone. These are just stones. They do not harm. They do not benefit. And the one who is worshipped is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu uh, كان الحجر ويقول إني لا أعلم أنك حجر لا تضر ولا تنفع ولولا أني رأيت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقبلك ما قبلتك. So this is Sayyidina Umar. See the the aqida. See the uh, what he thinks. He says he he used to kiss the black stone and he says, I know you you are just a stone. You don't uh, benefit me. You don't harm me. And if I ha should, uh, haven't seen Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam kissing you, I wouldn't have kissed you. Now we finish tawaf. After finishing the tawaf, we pray two rakas after behind the standing place of Ibrahim alayhi salam. And Allah mentioned that in Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah 125, when he says, And take from the standing place of Ibrahim, a place of prayer. So we do two rakas of tawaf. After that, we we go to uh, as safa wal marwa, and we go seven uh, times. Each going from safa to marwa is considered one. Marwa to safa two, and we do that seven seven rounds. So what's the secret of al safa wal marwa? Performing this sa'i between as safa and marwa reminds us that the best thing to do is to depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember the story of Sayyidina Ibrahim when he left Sayyidina Hajar and her baby. He left them there. In a place that has no plans, no nothing. And he wanted to go away. He wanted to leave them. And his wife, Hajar, she asked him, did Allah order you to leave us? Zayna Ibrahim said, yes. What was her answer? She said, then Allah will not let us down. Allah will not let us down. Think of this complete tawakkul of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now the Safa and Marwa is uh, done. Then the ones before performing Hajj go to Arafat. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Al-Hajj Arafah, Al-Hajj Arafah, Al-Hajj Arafah. Ayyamun faman ta'ajjala fi yawmayni fala ism. So, mina thalath. So, this is uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, the Hajj is Arafah. Hajj is Arafah. Hajj is Arafah. So, if someone misses Arafah by uh, one minute, then he missed Hajj. The days of Mina are three. But وَمَنْ أَدْرَكَ عَلَيْهِ وَمَنْ تَأَخْرَ فَلَا إِثْمَ عَلَيْهِ So, 
these are rules there are rules that we have to follow there are secrets for following these rules so the day of Arafah is the day that what happens people are saved from hellfire imagine that um shaitan shaitan whispers to people and on the day arafa of arafa sayyida aisha radiyallahu anha taqul qala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ma min yawmin akthar min an yu'thiq allah fihi 'abdan min an-nar min yawm arafa so this is sayyida aisha radiyallahu anha saying that the Messenger of Allah, Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, said, there is no day on which Allah sets free more slaves from hell than he does on the day of Arafah. What happens to shaitan? He does his best all year around to whisper, to, to make people deviate from the right path, to, to be away from Allah, to do so, so many bad things. But when they go to Hajj, when they stay, uh, when they are in Arafat, then Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, says, مَا رُؤِيَ الشَّيْطَانُ يَوْمًا هُوَ فِيهِ أَصْغَرُ وَلَا أَدْحَرُ وَلَا أَحْقَرُ وَلَا أَغْيَضُ مِنْهُ فِي يَوْمِ عَرَفَةِ وَمَا ذَاكَ إِلَّا لِمَا رَأَى مِنْ تَنَزُّلِ الرَّحْمَةِ وَتَجَاوُزِ اللَّهِ عَنِ الذُّنُوبِ الْعِظَامِ So shaytan is not considered more abased or more cast or more com contemptible or more angry he humiliated on a day than on the day of Araf. that's only because he sees the descent of the mercy of Allah's disregard of the great wrong actions. He sees how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sets free people from hellfire. He sees that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives people on the day of Arafah. Then people go to Muzdalifa until Fajr then to Mina, then to throw the stones, and then to do tawaful ifadah, and then to break the ihram by shaving, or for women just cutting a little bit of their hair, they staying in Mina, and then tawaful wada. When someone performs hajj, and reaches the step of Tawaf al wada he feels that his heart is now connected to the Kaaba. How, how can he leave? Tawaf al wada is so touching. You tell you, Allah, I've been here. I, uh, I, want, I want to be always close to you so hajj when performing hajj you feel that you are connected to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you're making dua and you know that you are sure that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept this dua allah will fulfill your desires allah will fulfill your dua allah Allah will accept your repentance. Allah will accept you asking him for forgiveness. So when you perform tawaf al wada, you feel that you are going to leave your heart there. Performing uh, tawaf around the Kaaba all the time. So now... What is the big secret of performing Hajj? What is it that we can compare Hajj to? I 
actually, Hajj is almost a rehearsal of the Day of Judgment. How? Okay, let's take it step by step or point by point. Traveling reminds us that we are on a journey, that our life is a journey. So traveling to perform Hajj reminds us that we are on a journey towards the Akhir. So when we are going to Hajj, to perform Hajj, we prepare ourselves. We have some sustenance. Now that we remember that we are going on a journey to Akhir, to the day of judgment, to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this will always make us getting prepared for that day. And we mentioned at the beginning of this series and all, or at the beginning of each and every class of this series that the purpose of this series is to get us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to get us prepared for the day when we leave this dunya. So while remembering that we are on a journey to the Akhir, we make sure that all our actions are pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we want to do our best just to make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pleased with us so that we would be of the group about whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, رضي الله عنهم وردوا عن Allah is pleased with them and they are pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when someone always thinks of the akhirah, then he rectifies everything, his actions with others, uh, and he does his best so that, no, everyone around him is pleased with him. He doesn't say anything that would hurt anybody. He doesn't do anything that would make anyone upset. He, he just wants to be on the safe side so to reach the end safely. So, starting the journey to perform Hajj, uh, like any other journey, someone just uh, gives a um, farewell to everybody and uh, asks them to make dua for him. What does this remind us of? It reminds of the uh, last moments of a person in this dunya, that he is going to leave this dunya. So when he starts the journey, he left, then this is like death itself. It's like getting out of this life. So, when a person reaches the miqat, then he wears the white cloth. That's for men. He wears the white. So, the white towels. What does this mean? What does this remind us of? The white shroud. So when someone dies, they will be buried in a white shroud. In a haram, wearing the white uh, towels resembles the leaving of this world and preparing for the journey toward the day after. Now, this is the white shroud. Now, what does it tell me? اللهم لبيك. What does it mean? What does it look like? It looks like the angel holding the trumpet just to 
blow it so that the reckoning starts. So, going on the journey is compared to death and going out of this dunya. Now, uh, we are in uh, Mecca, performing the steps, the actions of Hajj. And we just mentioned that with each action we do there, there is a secret. And the more the heart is pure, the more this heart can get of the lights and the secrets. And always when the heart is pure, then it gets more close to Allah, closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what does it do when when you when you feel you are close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What do you do? You make dua. You feel that you are so close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He is listening to you. And this is exactly what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah 186. He said, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانِ and when my servants ask you, O oh Muhammad, concerning me, indeed I am near. And I respond to the invocation, I respond to the dua, to the supplication of people when they call me. فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ So, let them respond to me. Let them obey, uh, uh, obey me and believe in me that they may be rightly guided. So whenever we are closer, we feel we are close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we make dua. During the Hajj journey, when all the Hajj actions are done, Either before uh, people start their hajj or after they finish the steps of hajj, the actions of hajj, they visit the Medina. So Muslims go to Medina to visit Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You are in, in the blessed Medina, al-Medina al-Munawwara. When someone goes to the Medina, the, the first thing that they, they, their mind is uh, thinking of is going into the Rawdah, the blessed Rawdah, Rawdah Sharifa. And so they go in to visit Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. For men, they can stand before Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Muwajaha. Or they can be next to the blessed head in in the road in the area for the women, which is uh, open to the women. So the first thing they would do is to pray to rakas in a road of Sharifa. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Ma bayna bayti wa min bari raudatum min riyadi al jannah. What is between my house and my member is a garden from the gardens of paradise. So what is there in the house of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa The grave of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa qabri wa minbari. So between the grave of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and the member, the, the pulpit, is a garden of paradise. So this is what people... Uh, yeah, the, think of the first thing they want to do is to pray in the Rawdah. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says also, Salatun fi masjidi hadha khayrun min alfi salatin fi ma siwahu min al-masajid illa al-masjid al-haram. One salah, performing one salah in, in this masjid of mine, 
Masjid al-Nabawi in the Medina al Munawwara, is better than 1,000 prayers in any other masjid. Imagine the, uh, the reward. Except for the Masjid al-Haram, the uh, reward there is higher. So when you go to Hajj or when you go to Amra, try to pray all your prayers in the Haram, in the Masjid of Rasulullah or at the Kaaba. Try to make up the five prayers of a day, Fajr, Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, Isha. Every day you are there. Try to pray at least one time Salat al tasabih Try to gain as much good deeds as you can as the reward there is highly multiplied. Subhanallah, while traveling, while going to Hajj, sometimes we, uh, so what What should we do? The, for, for a person performing the Hajj, the pers that, at that time, he should practice patience. So Hajj in itself is nothing but a school. And after finishing this school, the winners of the students who are graduating, they take their reward. So Hajj is a school. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the opportunity to make Hajj. And to give us the opportunity to make Umrahs on and on many times, inshallah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to unite us with him, to get us closer to him, to unite us with his Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And to make us, to make our children on the right path, following Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, so that when we meet on the day after, he is pleased with us and Allah is pleased with us. We can talk a lot, a lot more about Hajj, about the secrets of Hajj, about the etiquettes of Hajj, but that's all we are going to do for today. And until we meet next time, inshallah, we will have another outer action that would get us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And until then, I send my salam and your salam to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.